Greetings and felicitations again. I would like to dedicate this video to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and thank you and welcome you to this sixth video. In the previous video, uh, the genealogical argument, that was supposed to be the seventh video. I kind of jumped over this one and went to the genealogical argument. Uh, so this one, the sixth video, is, called, is entitled Brevior Lectio Portior. Now it doesn't really matter what order you watch these videos in, they're all self-contained. But uh, I would suggest you watch the first one, which is entitled A Partial Answer to Dr. James White, uh, first, because in that what we do is we explore the idea of the older manuscripts being more authoritative, and we see that the Byzantine tradition follows or goes back to the first, second century and uh, there's more evidence that the Byzantine manuscripts are there and I'll present them in a, in a actually there's evidence of Byzantine manuscripts in the first century but we'll take a look at that <clears throat> in the future in this video we're looking at brevior lectio portior um, that's a Latin phrase and uh, what it means is brevior which means brief lectio which means reading and portior which means to be preferred um, the brief reading is to be preferred or the shorter reading is to be preferred and this has its uh, sister with the conflation the conflation theory is that uh, the Byzantine manuscripts conflated that they brought together the uh, uh, and made a larger brought together different readings and made a larger reading in this one the shorter readings are to be preferred uh, brevior lectio portior um, also, the term interpolation is used uh, by them. An interpolated text is a longer text. That is, there are interpolations, there are comments, maybe even some conflations, whatever, is put into a text to make it longer. And uh, a non-interpolated text, of course, would be shorter. And according to the critical text theory, the shorter readings are to be preferred because to them, Scholars are more likely to make a shorter reading, as we saw in Westcott and Hort's statement at the beginning of this. The scribes make shorter readings rather than longer. The problem is, it's just the opposite. Whatever Westcott and Hort are saying in their book, there's no evidence for it anywhere in the, the manuscripts. I mean, we've been looking at conflation, we're looking at genealogy, we're looking at the the geographical arguments, we're looking at older manuscripts, in everything that they are saying in this book of theirs, uh, <clears throat> it's just the opposite of what they're saying, and it's incredible that people would actually believe this. So uh, let's take a look at uh, Brevior Lectio Portior. We just had a definition of it in the beginning, Westcott and Hort, I explained what Brevior they also use the term interpolated and non-interpolated texts, which interpolated larger, non-interpolated shorter uh, readings of texts. So when you're doing your reading and you come across these heavy statements of theirs, uh, don't be too frightened because the words are not that difficult to understand. And uh, what we're going to take a look at now is I'm going to show a series of textual scholars who are actually saying that this idea of brevior lectio portior has nothing to do with the Greek texts. So, let's take a look at what they're saying. When you read all these quotations from the very beginning of this uh, video to the end, to what we come to at this point, one is struck by the confidence of these uh, scholars. I mean, Streeter is saying it is completely refuted. Colwell is saying that the falsity of this text. Uh, Royce is saying that the uh, uh, it is uh, what that the strong tendency of omission. 
I mean, these men are not mincing their words. They're, they're making it very cl clear and plain that uh, this idea of the shorter readings of being more uh, preferred than the longer readings is just not the case. You can't find it in the Greek manuscripts. These men have uh, very uh, diligently gone through the Greek manuscripts. They have looked at them and they have compared what Westcott and Hort are saying with what the Greek manuscripts uh, show. And by doing so, they are confident of the fact that it's not the shorter readings that are to be preferred, it's the longer readings. That is, the uh, original text was actually longer. It was, it was a conflated text, if you want to put it that way. It was a text that had lots of information in it and that showed the erudition of a first century Jew like the name of like Paul and uh, it shows the working of the Spirit of God working in the hearts and minds of men to bring them up to their best abilities in speaking and writing. It, it doesn't show that uh, these men are, t are, are writing like um, I, I hate to put it this way but as the critical text seems to seems to want to show that these men are grunting and uh, that they that they are less educated than they really are and uh, that the, therefore the shorter readings are shows their in the sense their ignorance and not their erudition which is just the opposite of what the manuscripts are showing they're showing the erudition of a Paul of a Peter of a Luke who is a physician uh, and uh, of Matthew, Mark, and, and John as well, who men who were brought to the height of their uh, abilities by the Spirit of God, not pushed down. And uh, that's one of the uh, one of the marks of uh, Reformed theology, is that the Spirit of God works with man and within him. He doesn't work without man or against him. He works with man and within him to bring him up to sanctify him, to make him more holy. And uh, these, are the, these are the things that we're seeing in the differences between the Byzantine manuscripts and the Alexand Alexandrian. And I'm using those terms simply because these terms are used by the text critics and by Dr. White. But there is only one uh, tree and all of these manuscripts fall within it. Some of these manuscripts are closer to the trunk and closer to the originals and others are farther away and it's those other readings that we push away that we do not use and we use those readings that are closer to the trunk that are closer to the original manuscripts to the extent that we can get to the originals but you can't get to it by using this philosophy that um, was Cotton Hort have brought about this philosophy is pushing people away it's pushing the text farther away. You are becoming more distant from the original text using this philosophy than you are coming closer to it. Now in the future I'll, we'll take a look at uh, several passages in scripture on this matter and uh, we'll see how the uh, Texas Receptus works with the works with uh, the text to show us the original manuscripts. And, uh, but right now, what I'd like to do is just show just how Dr. White is arguing his point in his book, The, uh, the King James Only Controversy. <laughs> in his book, The King James Only Controversy, on page 76, uh, pages 74 through 76, there's a, there's a diagram on page 75. Um, Dr. White is talking about the fuller as well as opposed to the more succinct, the shorter readings. And he is preferring the shorter readings over the fuller readings. So let's see how he argues and what he, how he really cognizes uh, this understanding. And uh, just bear in mind what we have just read concerning these uh, scholars and how diligent they were in, in uh, examining the Greek manuscript. Here's what James White says. It is evident in reading Dr. White's book 
that his view concerning the shorter readings, uh, he believes that that's correct. But it is also evident from the readings that we have I've shown you before that scholars have entirely refuted this Westcott and Hort and James White view concerning the shorter readings. James White on page 75 of his book creates a chart on one on one column he says he shows the uh, different uh, texts of scripture and in the next column he shows the Nestle Island what the Nestle Island says concerning that passage and in the third column he shows the uh, the majority text, the Texas Receptus view. And uh, it's evident that what he is showing is that the, the Nessel Island is a shorter reading than the majority or the Texas Receptus. But what he has not proven is that the shorter reading should be preferred. The, it is clear that the Nessel Island text is a shorter text, but it is also clear at looking at the evidence that I've shown before that uh, that Dr. White's view concerning the shorter readings is not correct. It is the longer readings that are closer to the originals rather than the shorter readings. And, uh, and as such, Dr. White is promoting in this particular subject, textual criticism, a false philosophy. It is wrong to say that the shorter readings are to be preferred. That is clear in the very confident statements that are being made by Bruce Metzger, by James Royce, by uh, Dr. Gordon Clark, by A.C. Clark, by uh, Streeter, by all of these text critics who have actually taken a look at the manuscripts and compared them to what Westcott and Hort are saying. Now throughout this whole video series I have been addressing the philosophy the presuppositions that text critics are using in order to create this new text that came out in the 1800s. These presuppositions are false presuppositions. It is a false philosophy. And uh, as such, it should not be used by the church to create a Greek text. And uh, as such, it is not a good thing. It is not reformed. It is not biblical. It is not historical. It is not uh, it is not rational either, even though it might have its own s rationale within its context. Uh, it's, it's not rational to say that the uh, shorter readings are to be preferred over the longer readings. And this, Dr. Uh, Gordon Clark uh, points out clearly in his book, Logical Criticisms of Textual Criticisms. So what do we have? We have a false philosophy that is being promoted by Dr. White, Dr. Wallace, and Dr. Carson, and many others uh, today. This is a call to come back to the Textus Receptus, to come back to the text of the Reformation, and to follow in the footsteps of the providence of God that brought the Textus Receptus in the light of the Reformation. So my time is up. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, may God bless you, and this video is for Christ and Christ alone. Amen.